Assalamu alaikum, you're watching Views and News and I'm Faisal Rahman live uh, from our Islamabad studios. Today we'll be talking about the economic outlook of Pakistan and the challenges that are right in front of all of us. Government's efforts to stabilize the economy, that is what we'll be talking about. Um, though that uh, a lot has happened during the last three, four days when you talk about the dollar trading well over 250, you talk about inflation according to the official figures well over 24 percent, uh, not official, but according to a lot of uh, financial institutions and according to the experts in economic affairs. Now, uh, talking about the petroleum levy that has been increased, though three rupees relaxation was given on the petrol, but when you talk about diesel, again, it was increased. So the case was with uh, other petroleum products. At the same time, having said that, we have all witnessed where the stock market went. And I still remember when Miftah Saab took charge as the finance minister, he told the nation on the national television that uh, you sell your properties and invest in stocks. And I hope uh, that uh, all those who did must be suffering at the moment because that was a statement that shouldn't have been given. And secondly, that also coming from the finance minister of a new government. Now, another issue that is again very important is about the increase in the uh, bills, whether you talk about electricity or you talk about gas or you talk about, obviously we do understand that the LNG prices have gone up by almost 10, 10 times, 10 times during the last one year. Coal prices went over five to six, per, uh, six times, not percent, six times just imagine the last one year. And we import both these products. Regarding wheat, we all know the prices have gone up now. Instead of uh, importing 3 million metric tons, we plan to import 4. Again, a big uh, uh, import bill is going to be ready. Now, on top, the current flood situation all over Pakistan, whether you talk about Balochistan or Karachi or Punjab or perhaps KP, Gilgit, Baltistan, you name it, Kashmir, it has become a real problem which should have been handled earlier, but as we all uh, know that uh, most of the governments in Pakistan, they always take ad hoc steps. They start working at the final stage when the patient is almost on the ventilator. No proactive approach. That is something of prime concern. Now talking about uh, the interest rate, 15 percent, very high as we speak. Imports have increased. Now if you are putting a check on the imports and those imports in particular which will help you export at some stage. Again, they, that uh, has become a problem as well. Uh, you talk about um, saving Pakistan state oil, a government state uh, institute I would say, 30 billion additional taxes will be charged from the people to protect this particular company. Now we'll be talking about that. You know, whenever I, I go through these, July inflation uh, clocks at 24.9%. Highest in 14 years. This is not me, this is Dawn News reporting. Now you move on. Let's talk about the other issue. Mifta sees pressure on rupee easing in the next two weeks and uh, perhaps he sees it at 240 rupees a dollar. Well, uh, currently we all know where it is. So it won't make any difference as such. Uh, again, the PTI bashing that has become a norm now. Is it really helping improve the economy? No, sir. Then IMF board may meet earlier to approve Pakistan tranche. We all know this tranche was uh, around 1.17 billion. Uh, the government institutions intervened and finally they have said that most likely the money is going to be approved. Again, the Americans were told to do so. State Bank of Pakistan says Ministry of Finance also says Pakistan's financing needs will be more than fully met in fiscal year 2023. Now the interesting fact is when you talk about 2023, uh, the global overall um, growth rate has been uh, reduced. That is also going to affect Pakistan. So if you're talking about 0.5% uh, growth in UK perhaps, you can well imagine what the situation is globally uh, doing. Now these are like just a couple of uh, interesting facts that I've, I've talked about, but uh, there are more facts. Uh, the positive ones in this particular report. Let's watch it and after that I'm going to introduce you to our panelists and we'll continue our discussion. 
While espousing government's efforts to stabilize Pakistan's economy, Pakistan's finance minister Mifta Ismail in his recent news conference said that Pakistan's imports have recorded a significant decrease of worth $2.7 billion during the current month and this decrease in imports will help in reducing pressure on Pakistani rupee from the next month. He also added that the government is determined to minimize the current account deficit left by PTI's government. Finance Minister also added that Economic Coordination Committee has approved to remove ban on imports except cards, mobile phones and home appliances. He said that government has saved the country from default and the government is taking all the steps to broaden the tax net. On the other hand, most recently, the U.S.-based investment company J.P. Morgan in an article reported that Pakistan will not default on its payments. Finance Minister, while quoting this article, said that Pakistan's bonds are safe and a smart investment. Moreover, Minister of Finance and Revenue Mifta Ismail said that government is taking steps to satisfy the small traders with a new tax law. In a tweet, he said, Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has already instructed him to ensure that small traders are completely satisfied with the new tax law. The finance minister said, in order to satisfy the small traders, the government will exempt shops with bills of less than 150 units from this tax. Now to talk about it, let me quickly introduce you to our panelists. We have with us in our studio on my right is Amir Hussain Saab, who is a senior columnist. Sir, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll be talking to Dr. Vakar Ahmed Saab, Joint Executive Director of SDPI. He's going to join us on the telephone. And we also have with us Dr. Akhtas Afzal Saab, Senior Economist. Uh, Dr. Saab, pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you very much for your time. But let's start off from you, Amir Hussain Saab. Number one, question. Now, sir, I don't know where to start from, but because <laughs> there are so many interesting issues, let's start off from the most important factor, which really hurts uh, the people, and that is about the inflation. So, 24.9 percent <coughs> increase in the month of July for the year 2022, highest ever in 14 years. There is no question your comment is required sir uh, thank you very much i think <coughs> this is really really an alarming situation uh, if uh, you don't have economic policy in place uh, you don't produce enough you don't uh, <coughs> uh, you know have enough uh, production that can feed your people and uh, we are heavily reliant on imports and the import bills has gone up and uh, now uh, we are a completely debt servicing economy where we have to we don't have the alternate ways of you know uh, reducing the current uh, uh, situation the, the deficit that is going up i think the the only way left is to uh, you know impose taxes on people uh, inflation will go up uh, the commodity prices will go up because we don't produce, we, 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 we do a uh, lot of imports. So I think this is an accumulated situation coming out of the years of negligence on economic planning, the structural reforms that are required for the economy to govern the country, because these are the structural problems. So we always look into the temporary and the max shift arrangements for economy which, which, which do not work. For instance, uh, we, we, we let's compare with the Bangladesh and other neighboring countries. How do they overcome this problem? Number one is the governance. Mm. Second is to to build on the comparative advantages that do have. The Pakistan has certainly comparative advantages to produce enough for the local market, but also for the international market, right? So we have energy prices that have gone up. They're doing the, the you know the, the the ecosystem for doing business has mm. gone really has been impacted adversely. Trust so deficit cannot, again. So yeah, trust deficit and political instability, lack of planning. Right now, you see uh, that if you are an investor, if I'm an investor, I want to invest in Pakistan, I cannot purchase uh, power or energy or electricity on a very exorbitant rate mm -hmm. and I cannot be competitive international and even local market. So I think the cost of doing business uh, has really gone high. up. And, uh, yeah. So I think when, because we are there are two things that we need to look into. One is that uh, we heavily rely on government jobs, and we heavily rely on uh, you know uh, the comfort jobs. We don't produce the entrepreneurial base for the country, the business base where we can grow as an economy. Mm -hmm. 
And I think uh, unless we do the long term planning, we will not be able to overcome because this in super inflation will keep coming. We are into 23rd IMF program. Mm. After every episode of three or four years, we face this problem, but we don't get out of it because we don't we don't uh, you know, restructure the economy which is needed right now. To that's that's a very important factor. Now coming uh, to you, uh, Dr. Akhtar Safzal Saab, couple of uh, because you know this economy is such a huge subject. At times, uh, you know you you start working on the uh, growth side your inflation goes up and if you start working on the inflation side your growth goes down I mean sometimes you have to increase your interest rate to counter inflation now my, the question is I was listening to Mifta Saab's interview uh, and Mifta Saab was saying that you know my primary target was to get uh, the money from IMF rather than uh, focusing and I'm sorry this is what he said that uh, should have focused on inflation issue as well as on the growth issue and we were not our primary objective was to get money from IMF. Now, so it has always been three, four months now. Um, uh, the staff level meeting has been done now. We have also learned that perhaps the army chief also called uh, the, the deputy secretary of state and um, uh, Chamberlain, uh, Wendy Chamberlain, and uh, in fact uh, asked her and persuaded her uh, to put pressure on IMF to release the tranche of $1.2 uh, billion. Uh, dollars now sir just imagine 1.2 billion dollars I mean honestly speaking when I compare Pakistan with a couple of Indian industrialists Indian industrial center because they are the competitors in one way or the other so 1.2 versus what what they are up to your take sir thank you very thank much you. Uh, Faisal for inviting me to your show um, I was listening to the analysis that was being presented by a uh, guest um, on your show and um, it is a very interesting analysis but I would just like to add that um, the current situation that Pakistan is facing right now it's not uh, well I mean partially it's probably because of you know years of neglect but this crisis that Pakistan is facing is uh, primarily coming out of the global inflationary shock that all countries of the world, including the U.S., that is suffering from um, highest inflation in 40 years, Correct. UK that is also experiencing inflation, highest inflation in 40 years, um, it's basically coming out of that. So I think uh, when we talk about the economic situation, we have to realize that this is primarily coming out of global events that was set into motion primarily um, at the start of hostilities between Russia and Ukraine. I mean, we, we saw a commodities global cycle, and it is that pass-through of inflation uh, which has brought so many different problems for Pakistan. And I uh, agree with the, the finance minister's focus on getting a grip on uh, the current account. Because I think without that, I mean, it, there would have been a very, very big problem. We would not have been able to get a grip on a balance of payments crisis. So uh, when he says that his focus has not been on inflation, his focus has not been on economic growth, I think that is the correct approach for right now. And once we are out of this balance of payments crisis, which is really going to uh, probably... I wouldn't say that it's going to end, but we are going to be in a very comfortable position once the IMF releases its tranche. And once that comes through, I think uh, we are going to be in a situation whereby we can safely say that Pakistan has indeed been able to avoid default. I would just like to remind you that Pakistan is the third country in South Asia that has to that had to go to the IMF. I mean, first we saw what happened in Sri Lanka. Then um, your guess was just talking about the success of the Bangladeshi economy, but the Bangladesh is also suffering from a very, very serious um, current account situation, and it had to go to the IMF to negotiate a package of almost 5 billion US dollars, and Pakistan is the third country. So many countries are facing this situation. The government is trying to do its level best, and I think this is a unique crisis in a generation, and um, I really hope that the IMF assistance comes through as soon as possible so that this uncertainty that has come about in the wake of 
uh, political events in the wake of the delay in the release of the tranche uh, that can really uh, be minimized and the economy can finally stabilize. Now, one more quick comment, sir, because when we talk about this uh, inflation issue, perhaps this is one of the most important one. Now, it is generally believed that the real hit which people will take will be in the month of August, September and October. Now, there is a lot of political uncertainty. One party says that the election date will be announced in, let's suppose, another six to eight weeks. Then we end up hearing and uh, saying that uh, the, uh, the government in the federal capital says, well, everything is in control, things are tough, but we'll manage it. You know, mixed signals, that's what I'm talking about, sir. Uh, our own <coughs> finance minister, remember, he said that um, one should sell all the property and invest in the stock market, sir, and all those who listen to him are doomed now. And those uh, who did not, perhaps, are a little better off. So do you think, sir, these kind of statements which are being issued at that level, which can make a lot of difference, should not have been said, A. And secondly, sir, when you talk about the management plan or a plan or a comprehensive kind of thinking that is going to take Pakistan out of these issues, these problems, though there will be a lot of hindrances, a lot of uh, problems in the, in the future as well as you rightly mentioned about the Ukraine and Russia war, perhaps it is not going to end. There is more tension now on the Taiwan issue. Look what is happening out there. Nancy Pelosi will visit Taiwan. We just got to know about it. Mm -hmm. Now, don't you think, sir, that is also going to bring in a lot of pressure at the macro level and perhaps developing countries like Pakistan? Uh, they might suffer more because at the end of the day, we are the strategic partners of the Chinese. Your take. I think, uh, Faisal, you're exactly right when you mention that political uncertainty, political instability has been a driving factor uh, in this huge depreciation that we have seen in the Pakistani rupee vis-a-vis -vis US dollar. Uh, if, you, um, if you read um, the information that is coming out of the state bank, you will find out that about half of the depreciation is accounted for by economic fundamentals. And 50% of the depreciation is being um, uh, is being linked with political uncertainty and instability. So you are exactly right. Political instability is a huge driver of um, the negative economic uh, situation that we have been witnessing. And yes, if the economic, uh, sorry, if, if the political instability, uh, political uncertainty, or what is now being called political risk does not minimize in the coming months, I mean, any plans that the government have uh, has um, in terms of stabilizing this economy are going to come to naught. So I think political instability or minimizing political instability is going to be uh, one of the key drivers of the economic situation. Now, coming back to your uh, comment about uh, Taiwan, um, I think absolutely um, any changes in the geopolitical balance of power or any semblance of change in the geopolitical balance of power is going to have um, is going to have uh, an impact on prices of various commodities primarily oil and I think Pakistan um, Pakistan's economy is extremely sensitive to the price of oil I mean right now it is hovering around a hundred dollars which is somewhat comfortable for Pakistan um, compared to 122 or even 127. Uh, but this is uh, a price that Pakistani economic policy makers are watching very, very carefully. And if there are consistent increases in the price of oil, then different level of policies are going to be uh, enacted by Pakistani, Pakistani policy makers, which could even involve um, starting a rationing plan for uh, energy or fuel because I think that is something that we just cannot um, afford uh, right now. All right. Now, we have also been joined in by uh, Dr. Vakar Ahmed, Joint Executive Director of SDPI. Dr. Sahab, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Professor Sahab. Uh, Dr. Sahab, a couple of uh, questions for you, sir. According to uh, one of the <clears throat> uh, 
uh, international financial, I would say, evaluators, let me put it this way. Like we have so many, uh, like Moody's, Burr's and Moody's, and uh, Stata, this uh, particular one when we talk about the Fitch. I mean, they, they believe that uh, the economic outlook is negative now. Negative means for various reasons. Uh, now, this is something, you know, where we feel that we have been degraded, degraded uh, to a certain level where obviously when you talk about, uh, you know, transactions with a lot of other financial institutions, that is going to be something of prime concern. When you talk about attracting the foreign investment, people will not only think twice, maybe they will think a dozen times. When you talk about the bonds issue for that matter, obviously the interest rate would matter after the statement. And then there is a long list that uh, we, can, we can talk about. But sir, one quick comment, and that is about the current economic situation of Pakistan, sir. During the last five years, Dr. Saab, if, please correct me if I'm wrong, almost $145 billion was sent by the uh, non-resident Pakistanis or the overseas Pakistanis. And uh, whereas when you talk about the friendly countries like Saudi Arabia, UAE, China, perhaps a couple of other Muslim countries, including the financial institutions, what they gave us during the last five, five years was a little less than 30, 30 billion dollars. Now, sir, don't you think that the previous government, they had a plan of Russian Pakistan, a lot of people invested. And later on, we got to know that about 1.1 billion dollars were withdrawn from the uh, commercial banks also, that also created. Then there are stories that perhaps 250 big bags, um, you know, full of dollars were sent abroad through various means from Karachi. I even if that is, that is a rumor, that is going to put a lot of pressure on dollar, which we have witnessed. I mean, just jumping five, seven rupees, eight rupees a day, it was just a joke. And now it has exceeded 250 rupees a dollar. What I'm saying is, sir, that uh, political uncertainty, yes. Uh, then uh, the wrong decision making, yes. Uh, political uh, indecisiveness, yes. Financial mismanagement, yes. Uh, where are we heading now, sir? It seems like uh, it's a rudderless plane, even without a pilot. Your take. Thank you very much, Pastor uh, Sir. And I think. Dr. Uh, Sir, if you could uh, speak a little louder, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I, I think you've summed it up very carefully. And uh, uh, I think. Uh, when you talk about the rating agencies like uh, Fitch and Moody's, for example, there are four main things that they are looking at very carefully. One, of course, is that uh, what are the upcoming debt repayments that a country needs to make? And therein, of course, uh, uh, there's, there's a large stock uh, repayment obligation that Pakistan will be seeing uh, or will have to make this year. Second, of course, looking at Import requires uh, value is not coming down anytime soon. So, uh, Doc, sir, we will try to connect again. We'll try to connect again because we can't hear you. Your voice is breaking up. We'll just get back to you on that, sir. Coming to you, sir, may I have the honor mm -hmm. uh, to have the answer for this particular question, sir? Um, well, I, uh, I'm, I not fully you now remember the question, so if you... No, the question was that, you know, considering what all is going on in Pakistan yeah. at the moment, sir, with the rating agencies, they have reduced your uh, s uh, rating yeah. uh, to negative. Yeah. I mean, what's going on? Well, I think this, is, uh, this was bound to happen because uh, is the, uh, as the previous uh, guest said that... Uh, the overall global economic meltdown is a fact, but uh, as Pakistan is concerned, we have more our own structural problems than the global economy, yeah, how it works. In a way, in the global inflation goes up, we are beneficiaries of that because the, in particular, the energy cri uh, prices uh, are going to come down. There are many ways where you can do correlations, uh, you know, in the international market. But right now, what the international rating agencies are saying is quite alarming because uh, this shows the lack of confidence, the lack of, uh, you know, pros prospects for, you know, improving the economy, the rate of trajectory that we had to set forth. Because uh, the, you know, this, the, the 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 writing comes both as a fact and as a perception as well. You know, as you know how it works. 
the perception is that Pakistan is completely in a very, uh, a, a very difficult situation in terms of economic, uh, is, is political situation right now. And uh, we are not heading towards... Sir, the kind of debt repayments that yeah. are due, due within this fiscal that's year. That's why, you know, even if you get, as you said well, that if you... If you even if one, you start printing one, dollars, you won't be able <laughs> to manage that. If you get even $1.7 billion from IMF, it is a peanuts because your needs are very high. Right? So I think whatever you do is uh, you have to borrow money. That's the only way. The first confidence that comes through IMF, IMF is a melting, the ice melting, it has the ice melting impact. After that, the Saudis will come and others will, you know, also. How, how are you so sure that the Saudis will come, sir? But will come, and they, they will end they, up investing they will over 4 they will billion. Charge, they will charge 4% as well, you know, because. Yeah, their charges the, are high. There's exorbitant charges. They, they, I mean, so if you look at the, f you, if you look at the sovereign debts in the international ranking, the four percent is very high. I mean, we 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 are four percent when the global outlook is around three point two percent. Yeah, growth. absolutely. Three so you can well so imagine the, the difference. Know, so the problem is that we will get money anyway, but we will get on a very high rate, which we cannot afford to. You know, we have to return the money as well. So I think uh, we are in a vicious cycle right now. Coming out of it is is a fundamental need right now because the governments have to you have four month five month plan it doesn't work you have to have five to ten years plan which is very important right now as of now you know what 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 we are lacking right now the most important devastating impact on the economy is the expo import of energy uh, you know in a fuel for power generation and the energy and all that so, though we have alternate energy options, if you look at the, if you look at the global index. Now, no, sir, another mm. quick comment. Mm. Mr. Joe Biden went to Israel, then he went to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Perhaps he was there for a for couple of reasons. One of the major reasons was to control and put a check on the uh, global energy uh, cost, yeah. the oil prices. Yeah. Now, that means that, you know, start producing more. This was the demand by the West for the Saudis because obviously Europe is looking at uh, the, the oil and oil. Absolutely. Now, what I learned that was so interesting that for the domestic purpose, Saudi Arabia perhaps is importing yeah. oil from Russia Absolutely. because that is cheaper. Cheaper. And at the same time, when it comes to the export, they are not reducing the price. Absolutely. See? That's true. So when, if they are working on this kind of a model, that means that uh, it yeah. won't be easy for a country like Pakistan yeah, who is already You're importing right. oil from Saudi Arabia, You're even right. whether on deferred payments or through Defer other means. Deferred payments are even, you know, disastrous for us because we have to ultimately bound to pay back the money on the higher charges. But I think our problem is again uh, the same, that we have a huge potential of uh, solar energy. If we use one so that, that is something, you know, sir. Yeah. And the hydropower generation, you know, if you look at the energy mix right now. Sir, what hydropower, sir? The whole Pakistan is in water. Hydropower. Yeah. I mean, we the have, mismanagement, have. bad governance. Absolutely. Pure examples of that, sir. Yeah. Sir, we have also been joined in by Dr. Vakar uh, once again, sir. Dr. Sir, I hope this time uh, I am audible. Thank you. Dr. Sab? Yes, can you hear me, Professor sir? Yeah, I can, can hear you, you sir. Also, either I would request my production uh, my team to sure. raise the volume slightly because most likely. Yes. Gee, clear, sure. sir? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Now, 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 sir, because uh, Dr. Sab, we were talking about this um, particular issue of uh, international oil prices, and I was just uh, having a word with uh, Amir Hussain that um, uh, Saudi Arabia is importing cheap oil for the domestic purpose from. Russia, whereas they are selling expensive oil because when you talk about uh, the the visit of Mr. Joe Biden uh, to to you know to persuade uh, the Crown Prince to lower the prices, perhaps he said OPEC and now OPEC plus plus means Russia, so OPEC countries or this consortium is going to decide. So interestingly now and then there came a very interesting statement from none other than the Foreign Minister of uh, Saudi Arabia that you know we have to take our own decisions. They have a different uh, business plan now. Uh, the kind of reliance they always had on the Americans, perhaps that's being reduced uh, to quite a level. Now, your takes up international prices, they have gone up. But interestingly, when we talk about the Pakistani government, sir, they have put more levies on the petroleum products, diesel price, 
kerosene oil they have all been increased 3 rupees merely 3 rupees that is not even 1% or maybe 1.3% or something perhaps even less than that uh, relaxation which won't make any difference sir your take on that Yes, thank you very much, Professor Sub. I think you're right. What, the, the way Saudi Arabia has uh, behaved in the energy market, I think this is going to be the behavior for the other GCC economies as well. Uh, if there's anything that has brought Saudi Arabia and Qatar uh, closer, it was their response to the way they have behaved in the energy market. And I think um, uh, supply oil supply takers such as Pakistan also would have to get used to the fact that uh, even if the GCC is able to source their own uh, supplies cheaply from Russia, uh, they will not be, of course, uh, decreasing uh, the price level at which they'll be offering uh, to net importers of oil such as Pakistan. So I think I agree with the state bank's assessment that we are in uh, for at least uh, the next one year, and uh, 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 we're in for high oil prices. Uh, within, even if there are some downward trends, short-term downward trends in oil prices in the global market, uh, uh, domestically we may not be able to bring down the prices. Uh, right. Not only because we have to lock uh, these prices uh, in, in the bond market, but also because uh, given that we are in the fund program, so a large part of our uh, uh, losses, uh, particularly in the circular debt space which we are trying to redeem, that are also being redeemed by keeping oil prices higher. All right. Now, now another, sir, when we talk about the fiscal space creation, <clears throat> uh, obviously, if you remember, uh, after the announcement of the budget, there was this new concept. I mean, pretty interesting. Super tax was imposed. Uh, they thought that they'll be able to grab around 210 to 240 billion rupees out of that and uh, the rich people will be taxed you know there was a certain income bracket so when you look at it closely i mean a lot of people uh, will be from the salary class also now the question is sir that super in, in uh, tax uh, would give them let's suppose x amount of money now they're also planning to uh, you know uh, doc sub uh, demand for another 30 billion to rescue pso uh, perhaps that is also going to be the pressure on the public, then whatever we talk about uh, with all these white elephants, A, the pressure on the people who have got nothing to do with steel mill or anything for that matter, but you know, this is the way it is. And on top, one more interesting uh, philosophy that the shares at this price where they currently are hovering. Uh, whether you talk about OGDCL, PPL, PSO, or you talk about Sui Southern, Sui Northern, or you talk about Steel Mill, PIA. Why, sir? Why? What's, what's the rush? Yeah. So I think because Mifta Sahib couldn't your, your, give a satisfactory answer for that also, by the way. Yes. Um, uh, first up, if I can take your first question on the uh, fiscal please, space please go ahead. I think... Uh, uh, while, of course, these are hard times and government had to resort to super taxes, you had to uh, bring the overall projected tax uh, calculation to a level which comforts uh, IMF as well. But that we can continue. Ultimately, we have to look at the data which we have, and you have seen in the newspapers yesterday that NASA has sent over a very large database to FBR which gives details of both a tax evasion as well as tax avoidance. It is those sectors, those entities, those people that we have to go after. Um, instruments like super tax or higher uh, taxes would, would end up uh, really burdening uh, those economic agents which are already uh, in the tax net. Ultimately, what these economic agents do is that they lay off the workers, which ultimately really results in greater uh, amounts of unemployment. Uh, not a good uh, story in the end. So now one hopes that uh, given that Nadra has yesterday handed over a large database uh, uh, of potential uh, taxpayers to FBR, one hopes that there will be political will to go after those uh, elements who are involved in tax evasion and ultimately greater revenue can be sourced from them. All right. Now coming to you, uh, Dr. Agdas Afzal Saab. Since inflation, you know, we have talked about it, it's a very, very important issue. So the government always tries to increase the 
uh, interest rate to counter and perhaps that particular formula is resulting in low growth because nobody is going to take money on that kind of an interest rate and especially when your inflation is around 30 percent, 24.93 percent to be exact. This is July. It is going to definitely cross 30 percent in the coming month because when you compare it with, with June, there was an increase of almost 4 percent or something. Now, uh, the interesting factor is that if this inflationary trend was driven by the transport sector, this is what um, they have also uh, said in a lot of documents. They said that the, that the prices increase by 65% on year on year basis, like YOY, followed by perishable food items at 32.93, that is 34%, and non-perishable items at 28.12%. Now, sir, even despite the fact that the global prices of crude, they have gone down, the government last night, I mean, gave relief for 3 rupees on petroleum, uh, on petrol, on petrol, though they increased uh, the price of diesel and other uh, commodities including the kerosene oil, which is a very basic commodity, sir, poor people use that for cooking with food or otherwise, because if you look at the gas prices or if you look at the electricity, beyond their even imagination. Now my point is, sir, please enlighten us, tell us that if this trend continues where the prices even if they are slightly gone they have slightly gone down the government still they do not have the fiscal space to give any relief to a certain uh, i would say segment rather they have increased the price and they have put more levy which was earlier also promised by the finance minister mr miftah smile that this is going to continue i'm not sure whether it is going to stop or not but sir if this is the trend God save Pakistan. Your take. Uh, perplexed. I, I think you seem to be pa painting a picture as if the government is intentionally trying to create problems. For, I'm not for saying that, country. sir. Not it intentionally, sir. I'm sitting in a state television channel. Mm. I'm talking about right. what <clears throat> people are saying, sir. And this, this is the data. It's not mine. It's all over the news. And this data is from the Board of Statistics. Just sharing that. Right, right. So, uh, I mean, um, I mean, I think you've answered the question yourself by saying that the government doesn't really have the fiscal space and all these fiscal targets have been promised um, by uh, to the IMF, without which the IMF was not willing to give you the tranche that is so very important for the stabilization of your economy. Because you have to remember that it's not just $1.2 billion. I mean, when the IMF um, you know, agrees to release money to a emerging market economy like Pakistan, it is also seen as a, uh, you know, uh, expression of confidence in that economy. And then other sources of um, funds, you know, friendly countries, we are talking about $4 billion. These countries are waiting for this first tranche to come in before they are going to release uh, these $4 billion. And then this is also going to enable Pakistan to access capital markets, you know, secondary markets uh, where Pakistan can raise uh, U.S. dollars. So I think um, the government, I would give them, um, you know, um, relatively high points for their management of the economy because when Mr. Miftar took on the reins of the economy, really, I mean, it seemed uh, during those two or three fateful weeks in April that we were heading towards default Sri Lanka style. But you know, most of the organizations that look at Pakistani economy are now saying that we seem to have avoided that fate. So I think um, the government's hands are tied. It's a very difficult situation for the people. And um, but really, I mean, I don't see anything else that could have been done in, in this situation. Uh, so I think sir, uh, one, 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 one uh, positive note, sir. As I was talking to you earlier, and I just mentioned two important facts here, sir. The money that was sent to Pakistan through the overseas Pakistanis was $145 billion during the last five years. Whereas the friendly countries and the financial institutions, China, UAE, Saudi Arabia, you name it, they ended up giving us less than $30 billion. So, sir, if we are dying, because, you know, I've heard myself, the Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah Saab saying, IMF ne to hamari naak se lakeere nikalwa li hain yani ke they have made you you know <laughs> do, do something <laughs> i mean i was coming up with the very very air force and military term 
यू नो जिसको फौज में रगड़ा कहते हैं बट नाक से लकीर है द पॉइंट इज सर दैट इफ दैट इज द सिचुएशन and you don't have any standing in front of you sometimes you know okay well, i i'm not sure whether the chief called or not but this is all over the news we haven't seen any denial of that that the chief had to call uh, chamberlain to you know put pressure on the imf to release 1.17 billion just imagine whereas the current government uh, which has lost the faith in the uh, non resident pakistanis overseas pakistanis and look what happened to uh, the minister uh asnik bal saab there i mean this is the general reaction if some sort of a package or announcement is given these people are billionaires out there sir 1.2 billion is just a bite for them i mean we are doing all the unnecessary uh, you know uh, we're taking those steps and taking those measures which is resulting in absolute trust deficit between the public and the current government i'm saying whereas things could have been done in a much more appropriate way imagine why would people withdraw money from their accounts and put it in their houses or in their lockers or in their safes for that matter forget about political uncertainty uncertainty i mean this this trust deficit that is the problem because if you talk about freezing the dollars that was done in um, uh, nawaz sharif's time right sir if i'm not wrong frozen people are scared that anything can happen you talk about that program what was it karz utaro pakistan samaro god knows what has happened to that many people were so enthusiastic so now people are ready listen sir we will you know they have got i mean they clueless your comments sir um i'm not sure how to approach uh, the comments that you have made because i don't agree with your assessment um i think the government seems to have a very comprehensive plan of dealing with the situation uh and i have seen them uh bend over backwards in order to bring this um this um imf program back online without which i am telling you we were heading in sri lanka's direction so i think the first and foremost thing that the government had to do was to avoid default it seems to me that the government has been able to do that successfully now other things remain for example there is a huge pressure on the common people because of inflation and i think in the second round of policy interventions you will see hopefully the government uh, you know addressing these issues of inflation and economic growth and i agree with the finance minister that those two things inflation and economic growth are totally secondary to the kinds of very serious balance of payments crisis that pakistan was facing uh, since april so um i i seem to be of the opinion uh, that the government has a plan and because of these very very sir you know i i i'll just uh, you know share one one quick government's plan because government plan means you know whatever you hear from your finance minister i remember when he took charge sir bifta was so happy and he ended up saying that you know people should sell their properties and start investing in the stock market and let's suppose sir all those who did do you know what must have happened to them sir any idea stock market is not really representative of the economy is the finance all. minister Even is the finance minister authorized to tell the people of the country to invest in something which re resulted in an absolute disaster uh, i said i think that's a question you need to put to the finance minister but what i'm saying you said the government is doing so good so well minister. they have a comprehensive plan if this is the comprehensive plan sir then uh, i would like to say thank you very much to my guests and i would like to say that uh, may allah bless pakistan thank you very much uh, uh, gentlemen dr akdar safzal saab dr wakar ahmed saab amir hussain saab was a pleasure having you sir thank you very much uh, for your presence sir and that's all we have for this half i'll see you hopefully tomorrow inshallah till then you take good care of yourself khuda hafiz